manipulated by the constitution. We do not have a federal government police force. We have the Nigeria police force, which shall be administered, organized, and supervised by the Nigeria police force. No, my lord, I want to say something. Huh? I want to say something here. Perhaps it might also enlarge the scope of people who should be invited here for examination. My lord, if we cannot find those who literally murdered Abiola, who are those people who could be said to be the beneficiaries of the death of Abiola? Rogers has linked you with some of the killing city. He never did. He linked you with the attempted murder of Ibru. He did not. My lord, the matters council is relating the evidence in our matters. Is this an adversary proceeding? It's not, my lord, but uh, we can't be talking about cases which are in court, Is my this lord. an adversary proceeding? It's not, my lord. These cases are in court, my lord. I'm just reminding you, lot of My lord, my lord, sorry, my lord. I think I'll be in court again. Legally Speaking, a program that deals with legal issues and questions we face as citizens of this amazing country, Nigeria. Legally Speaking, join us every Friday from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. for Legally Speaking. Hello, good evening. If you are watching us, you are on Spectrum TV, and if you are listening to us, this is Live Radio 101 at 1FM. And the program we're listening to is Legally Speaking. We apologize for coming on to the, on the program behind schedule, and to compensate for that, we'll open the phone lines from the beginning of the show. I have with me in the studio a legal practitioner with uh, Justice Chambers. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. I also have a legal practitioner with law partners and associates, uh, Tini Bass. Tini, welcome to the show. Thank you. All right, on today's show, we're basically looking at two uh, topics for discussion. <coughs> First is the news that nine months after the retirement of uh, Tadko Mohamed Jesse, that is the Chief Justice of Nigeria, he's yet to be paid this, uh, <coughs> this uh, uh, gratuity and pensions. And uh, let's not forget that Tango, Tango Mohamed retired before his time due to ill health. And we are worried that even with his ill health, nine months into the retirement, he still yet to receive his benefits. We look at the benefits and the packages that, comes, that came with it and uh, in view or in consideration of the uh, allied, if I want to call it allied, uh, uh, judiciary workers, the volume, the magnitude of the retirement benefit, and why it is difficult for the federal government <coughs> to pay that. We'll also <coughs> look at, on the second note, the Supreme Court's decision on uh, the governorship candidates of the All Progressive, uh, All Progressive Congress of Aquarium State. That's the suit between Ita Enang and Akad Udofia. Recall that soon after the judgment, all parties claimed victory. So we will want to understand why that was so and how ambiguous it was and why the Supreme Court will be making ambiguous judgment. So okay, let's start with the first uh, story. Tanko Mohammed, JSC, retired. Well, um, like you rightly said, uh, Tanko Mohammed, um, Chief Justice of Nigeria, former, retired nine months ago and um, from what we are reading uh, from his retirement till now he hasn't been paid his retirement benefit and also the perquisites available for occupants of that office one of which is the fact that the federal government will build a house for you for you to retire into we understand that that has not been given to him and for that reason he's still living in the official quarters that he he he, he stayed while serving as um, Chief Justice of Nigeria. Uh, a lot of Nigerian citizens have reacted to this, asking why it would take up to nine months and still counting before the Chief Justice of Nigeria would be given his retirement benefit. And also, some Nigerians have also queried the humongous sum accruable to the Chief Justice of Nigeria. Yeah. Uh, we're talking about um, what we have read, we've seen about two point something billion there. Um, accruing to someone who occupies that office and then retires and then two billion, two point something billion naira and a building 
And um, so Nigerian citizens have queried that when you compare it with what other people are getting, other workers are getting in the country. And um, when you also consider the fact that a lot of people in the judiciary, when they retire, they don't get as much as that. But why has he not been paid nine months after retirement? That is the question on the lips of a lot of Nigerian citizens. And um, I don't know, maybe Tony has a answer for why he has not been paid. Before I have the answer, if you are joining us, you can call. The lines are open now. The number is to call be 90 222 Three one zero one one. The alternative number to call will be zero seven zero four five four one seven seven zero seven. I repeat the alternative number zero seven zero four five four one seven seven zero seven. The other line is zero nine zero two 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 three one zero one one. So I come to you, Etili. Uh, let's understand that the governor stays in uh, or the president stays in Aso Rock. The Chief Justice of Nigeria has his own Aso Rock. And since last year, nine months ago, the Chief Justice of Nigeria retired and has refused to move out of his Aso Rock. How does that play out? Let's not forget that he's a third uh, well would I say he's the leader of the judicial arm of government, just like the president is the leader of the uh, executive arm of government. How does that play out in your mind? Like Barry Sakemini said, the um, former chief judge has not been given his retirement benefits. Neither has the house promised to him been given to him. So I think that's the more reason he's still staying in the quarters as meant for the chief judges. And to me, that would pose a kind of um, difficulties for the judicial commission because they have to maintain the sitting chief judge and they have to maintain the quarters of the sitting chief judge and the quarters still occupied by Tanko Mohammed. Now because I am I mean I'm imagining that that was happening in the executive arm oh. that uh, the governor refused to move out of the residential lodge mm -hmm. of the governor Hilton Mansion as we call it in view. Would that be proper? No, that would not be proper. I'm sure there will be lots of petitions. Because you, you appear to be giving an excuse for the reason why, why he's staying in the, uh, at the Aso Rock of the judicial arm of government. Because that's what it appears. Well, from what I read, he's not actually the person. It's children. But you know that position is 19th of the law. <laughs> Whoever is in position owns the place, owns his beauty. So, I, 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 I don't think I would agree with the the conduct of the CJN retired. Mm. If you're out of office, you're out of office. You're not sitting. You're no longer in the Supreme Court uh, premises. You don't come there except on official assignment or uh, maybe uh, uh, friendly visitations. And you still stayed in the house. Of course, you didn't occupy that house before, before you became CJN. You moved in because somebody moved out. And as such, most of the things there are government properties, except maybe the clothes that you brought in, which you are expected to live with, movable properties. Why would it be difficult for you to tell your family? Yes, I agree, I understand he has a very large family, almost 200 children, 100 and something children, right? <laughs> You're familiar with his biology, right? <laughs> I don't know if he has up to 100 and something children. Uh, but I, I think I'm he said. Sure he has up to 50. Oh no, he said he had a large family. He has a large family. Almost. Well, that interesting. Much. Being a Muslim and being um, authorized to marry four wives, uh, it's possible he could have 20, 20, 20. And that, that would mean um, 80 wives. I mean, 80 children from four wives. Uh, but the point is that um, I, I have listened to Etini. Um, I. I understand the analysis given by her in the sense that he may still be holding on for purpose of um, uh, requesting that the government should build. So he holds the government hostage. A, a, so he's just holding the government to ransom until they build the house for him. But I ask, what if the government doesn't build a house in the next five years for him? And the, 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 old, the other CJ in retires, the current CJ in that retires. So, so there will be two retired CJ awaiting houses and holding on to government properties. <laughs> so there are many wrongs there. 
there are many wrongs. Number one, it is wrong for governments to hold on to anybody's entitlement. If somebody has spent a number of years serving the government, I think the best way to reward that person is to pay the person his or her entitlement immediately the person is exiting from office. I am thinking that there should be a kind of system where money is being served for you. As soon as you are set to retire, a check is given or the money is offloaded into your own account. And I say this generally also, not only uh, about the CJ, but also about the civil servants. In other states of the population, the public servants, police, and so on. You serve, you, you're spending your whole life serving government. It is not the best thing for government to do, to hold on to what truly belongs to you. Remember, if you have spent a number of years working, you never can tell how long you're going to live again. And therefore, there's need for you to be able to be given what, what is entitled, what you are entitled, while you are still alive. Okay. So, that, so I feel that government is wrong in the first place in not paying his entitlement. I also feel that the former Chief Justice of Nigeria is also wrong in holding on to the official quarters. You are no more occupying that official office. You have left the official office. So everything that came with that office, you should sign off. And then give it to the next person to be able to function. So like Etienne said, he's not even staying there. He leaves it for his student to stay. But maybe he has given a, a, a clear instruction don't leave this house, no matter who comes to tell you to leave. So hold on to it. So he's still the one in possession. Because the children are staying there because they are the children of the former chief judge, uh, chief justice of um, the Federation of Nigeria. So this is not proper. Federal government is wrong. The former CJN is wrong. Okay. Once you are done, you leave. Okay. Now let's, let's take a consideration to the amount of money expected to be paid to him, 2.5 billion naira. I mean, that's more than a, a month's allocation to some states, right? 2.5 billion. Now, that does not include the fact that he has to be built a mansion in Abuja or anywhere else he chooses the mansion to be built for him and other things that have not been officially disclosed to us. 2.5 billion naira runs into several hundreds of millions of naira times two and times another half because i'm imagining that you have a hundred million you have 900 million to to have one billion and you put that twice you know another 100 million to two to 900 million then another 100 to 500 million that's quite huge he's retired at 70 plus right and uh, the expectation expect, life expectancy you live up to 90. Does 2.5 billion naira seem adequate or more than adequate? Maybe it's not but adequate. Let, it in, let, it in that. <laughs> let us say, I, mean, I think it's not adequate. <laughs> I think the amount is too much for a person. I mean, at his age, what is he going to use the money for? His children or what else? It's, it's, it's too much. That's 300% of his, his annual salary. Come on. He's much. Oh, I, I, I agree with her. I agree with her entirely. Because whilst he was active and it's expected that he had a family going, mm. he didn't make that much money. Mm. And mm. now when he's closer to his grave, right, mm. he's now being paid almost a uh, hundred and something million, or one point something billion. You know, two point something billion. Two point something billion. Oh, I, I feel it's um, it's too much. Um, it's um, okay. So I, I feel it's too much. I feel also, and why I'm saying it's too much is when you compare that amount with what's happening in the country, what the majority of other people are earning in the I country. What's a high court judge earning on retirement? What's a justice of the court of retirement? Now, what's the principal of a school earning on retirement? Civil servants, policemen that have spent their lives, they've been risking their lives for Nigeria. What are they earning upon retirement? So, in as much as I, I hold the office of the Chief Justice of Nigeria in the highest esteem, 
the same thing with the office of the president, the same thing with the office of the Senate president. I do not think that it is appropriate in a country like Nigeria where there is so much inequality and there is so much poverty for one person to be given such humongous sum of money. Now, why was he not paid this kind of money when he was still serving? Which is what people are even clamoring for. You remember that the other day, uh, Tahon, along with other senior advocates of Nigeria, went to the court and then asked for improved revenue, you know, improved salary for and allowances judges. for the judges. Because I, I, I imagine that if the uh, judges were being paid in billions as it is now, why would anybody go to court to try to up it? Yeah, no, but nobody will go to court, you know, to try to make it higher and so on. So uh, when you look at all that, I hold opinion, and I agree with it, Tini, that the payment of 2.5 billion naira for the re former chief justice of Nigeria and for other chief justices of Nigeria, plus an accommodation in any part of the country, is uh, something that needs to be reviewed. It's humongous. It, it, it creates serious inequality in a country like Nigeria. And sometimes I wonder, who are the people that came up with this kind of bogus policy? Well, I ask. Is he, is he the first person to be paid this amount as retirement? No, we understand he's not the first person. We understand that the person that um, stayed there before him also got the same thing and so on. So I have, who, who, who makes this kind of humongous package for one person? A man that is above 70 who has retired. Okay. You give him 2.2, okay. 2.5 billion. Let, 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 let's also. Yeah. Let's, well, he has let's also look at this. If it goes family. around to everybody, that would be fine. Yeah, they has families. Mm. Let's go. Let's imagine that there uh, are people like uh, Honorable Justice uh, Mary Odile that retired before getting to the office of the CJ. And uh, there'll be people, lots of other uh, justices of the, court, the federal the Supreme Court that are bound to retire before becoming CJ. Uh, the package is that much. Do they also stand to be paid two point something million billion naira? Are they also entitled to houses some at some places in Nigeria? You, you know, some things must necessarily be taken into consideration. If the uh, CJN earns that much, what happens to the other people? You understand? Other justices of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, maybe the Supreme Court, the Court of Appeal, can we disclose the salaries? Because I, I know people complain that the senators will be in pay humongous salaries. Now, if the senators are paid, in, if the chief judge is paid in billions, I can imagine what the Senate president will want to be paid in. Because they actually are the ones that approve these payments. So if the Senate president is not being paid in millions, billions, I mean to say, what happens when there are issues that will arise and the, maybe the issues of fiscal policies or monetary policies would arise and questions will be asked on the imbalance in the payments and retirement benefits of some of these people, would that not lead to a compromise in the part of the judges who would say we are receiving so you can also receive? Well, I... I know that every, everybody in an organization may not receive the same salary. The head of the organization will certainly receive more, but the gulf shouldn't be too wide. It shouldn't, there's, no, there's no judge of the high court and of the court of appeal that retires and gets up to a billionaire, not, I'm sure not even up to 100 millionaire. So why keep such wide gulf, you know, for the chief justice to retire and then make 2.5 billion naira as his retirement benefit in addition to an accommodation in any part of the country. So that means if he, he, he says, build this house for me in Asokuru Abuja, you will build it. If he says, bring it to Kanafon, you will bring it and build it there, heavy mansion and so on. I think the disparity is too much and it is something that Nigeria needs to check. All right, Nigeria needs to check that if, if you are trying to call, to check on us too. To check up on us, the numbers to call is 090-222-31011. Repeat that number, 090-222-31011. The other number to call is 
0707. The zero number is 070 All right, AKBD, uh, do we put that on the parking lot? I think we should put that on the parking lot considering the time we have okay. on our hands. Oh. Let's move towards the judgment of the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court, very recently, just before they postponed the election, announced that. Uh, announced and dismissed the appeal in his judgment, the appeal of uh, Senator Ita Enam, which, who was challenging the candidacy. Hello. Uh, good evening. Good evening, sir. Yeah, please, uh, listen to you before we speak on radio now about the money, the CJM. Okay. Please, can you speak louder so that we follow you? I said, please, uh, I've just listened to the radio program now. All right, sir. I've heard uh, the money, the CJM, uh, the CJM, and uh, others. I wanted to ask a question. My name is uh, Ekbo. Okay. Ekbo. Ekbo from Okay, sir. Yes, the, 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 the problem in Nigeria is the people that are working very hard doing the job every day like the teachers in school they go to school every day they do, they do everything are collecting major amounts of money why are receiving such amounts of money the disparity is too much and that's why uh, i don't even know what to say nigeria is like this at least the principal of the secondary school supposed to have had money that he will have from but at the end of the day, it seemed that the principal was not doing anything. But these are the only, the, the, sorry, not only people, but the people that are putting their efforts to work to bring up even the people that will become something in the future. They are too cheated. They are too cheated, and then I don't know what. I'm sorry about this. All right. All right. Thank you very much. You take over from it. See then. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Of course, his concerns are also our concerns. Mm -hmm. You are giving so much money to one person. Uh, it would have been tidier if a lot of people were, pensions for a lot of people were increased by releasing the ones for some of us without necessarily not recognizing their offices. So we're going back to Itainam versus uh, Akanodofia. Mm -hmm. Now, it is, the important thing maybe might not just be the fact that the Supreme Court entered judgment dispensing the appeal of uh, our, uh, rights in Senator Ita Ena. But what happened after that is what caught our attention. Ita Ena went on a shortly after that to explain away the judgment of the court and how it has given him powers to carry on. And Karudofia uh, 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 also, Karudofia uh, uh, Steve. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening to you. Tony good, by calling from good evening, Tony Etu. Yeah, I, I want to quickly, uh, you know, uh, submit by saying that uh, the teacher that thought uh, you guys, the ladies and uh, gentlemen, supposed to be more ladies because they are the ones that have the knowledge and they are the molders of these dating that become ladies and colleagues and all that. But the way they are being treated is not to write them about. So I was thinking that uh, late Mosiah, uh uh, that's why uh, uh, Adua would be able to correct that because he was a teacher. Even good luck, Jonathan was a teacher. Uh, the current vice president of Nigeria is also a teacher. And nothing is done in this regard. So I wonder who will come and solve the situation for the teachers. But uh, I'm sorry, I, I want to really listen to this and do not stop it the Maybe not interrupt. I will call back. Thank you for having me. All right, Tiritu. Thank you very much. You know, Tiritu has a uh, flair for teaching. so. Yeah, he, I think he's a teacher. He's a teacher, so he will mm. always be very interested on why teachers are not properly paid. All mm. right, so we're talking about but, 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 but sorry, let me just say something. I was thinking that teachers um, would have been well accommodated in this administration because the vice president is a teacher who rose through the ranks and became a professor. They have been. I, I, I so thought something would be done I, I, I to think improve the lot been done. of teachers. I, I, I doubt, I doubt. The retirement age has been increased, when you see, both nationally and states. When you hear about the kind of money received by nurses, someone did something to that effect, and that was Gowon's wife, who, okay. who, who, who is a nurse. You know. That's a long time ago. 
It's a long time ago, so I'm sure if Gawan's wife was even there today as the first lady of Nigeria, she would have even done more. And not since are very happy people I don't in think this society. Be that parochial. Okay, so let's let's get to uh, Akada. Akada. <laughs> <laughs> so the the, the 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 issue here is that shortly after the judgment, I think on the day of the judgment, mm. Itaida and his legal team came out and pressed the Supreme Court and said they are the rightful uh, flag bearers. Or mm. that the courts, the only thing that can happen will be that they go back for a fresh nomination, which when the election is in two days' time. And you know, there's a provision of the Electoral Act that says all elections and nom nominations must be concluded at least 14 days to the general election. Oh. So, but I don't think that's what was on the ABC. Do you have a copy of that judgment and uh, can you? help us read it, especially the reliefs oh. sort. Well, I have a copy of the judgment. The um, orders of court. Uh, for want of time, let's just go to the orders of court. Number one, it is hereby ordered as follows. One, that the appeal be and is hereby dismissed. Two, that the judgment of the lower court, allowing appeal of the first respondent, that's um, uh, Canadofia, and setting aside the judgment of the Federal High Court is hereby affirmed. I think I should read that again. That the judgment of the Court of Appeal, allowing the appeal of Akanodofia and setting aside the judgment of the Federal High Court is hereby affirmed. Three, that parties should bear their respective costs in the appeal. And four, that this judgment binds the sister appeal because two appeals were filed. So the, the Supreme Court said that this judgment binds the other judgment. That means the decision is the same. So from what is here in the black and white um, order of the court, it is clear that the Supreme Court has dismissed the appeal that was filed by distinguished Senator Ita Solomonena. The Supreme Court agrees with the judgment of the Court of Appeal. And what did the judgment of the Court of Appeal say? The judgment of the Court of Appeal said that the Federal High Court to you was in error to have entered judgment against Akanodofia. So what does all this mean? It simply means that whatever legal battle was waged against Akanodofia by distinguished Senator Itainang, all that has been set aside. It is as though there was no legal battle was River against Akanodofia. At, and after the Court of Appeal. After the judgment of the court of appeal. In fact, everything in, everything in that trajectory from trial court, court of appeal, and Supreme Court, everything has been pushed away completely. So now, parties return to status quo. What was the status quo? I'm talking about the status quo before Senator Itain and went to court. Went the to status, the Supreme Court. No, went to the trial court. Okay. The status quo before Senator Itain and went to the trial court was that Akanodofia was wrongly announced as the winner of the primaries of the APC by the APC. That was why Itainang went to court. Now, the Supreme Court having dismissed Senator Itainang's matter, it means that the matter returns to status quo. That status quo that said that it, uh, Akanodofia is the candidate of the APC for the governorship election in Akwaibo. So I do not know why this confusion came in by our distinguished colleague who said that um, the judgment was in his favor. I, I watched the video when he made it live on, um, on Facebook. He said the judgment is in his favor. He said that the judgment of the Supreme Court has not pronounced anybody as the winner and so on. But this judgment, which has dismissed the appeal, it means that Akanodofia remains as the candidate of the APC Akwaibo for the March 18th. Yeah, so, ATD, what's your uh, this? You've read part of that judgment. Mm -hmm. So, what's your what was your take when you read it? Okay. Like, like Barista Kiyomi said, the judgment is clear. I mean, dismissing the appeal or setting aside the appeal by Senator Zaina is clear enough. So, I don't see a reason you should misunderstand the imports of the judgment. You know, one would say that according to ethics <coughs> of the profession, it's not very uh, recommended that uh, councils defend themselves when they have personal matters. That's on one side. Mm -hmm. So you will not probably 
uh, be too emotional about your case. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, too, that councils refrain from commenting on uh, matters they're handling in court, which has become very trendy these days. As soon as you come out of court, you're taking photographs and you're addressing a press conference. Oh. Sometimes you arrange a press conference ahead of time. So whatever decision the court makes, you've already made your own decision and probably had written and crammed what you want to say oh. before the world press. So on coming out, <laughs> the result is not as you expected. So oh. You are compelled to say something. Oh. And in the process of saying something, you might now say what the court did not say, <laughs> which ordinarily would put you in contact. Oh. But considering this oh. and many more, oh. is it proper that we misinform the public because that was the height of misinformation. And well, a breach of the rules of court. Well, let, let's even leave. Let's even leave the rules of court. Let's imagine the profession. The rules pro professional conduct. Uh, let's leave the rules of the professional conduct. Okay. And imagine the ordinary man on the street who was waiting to vote on Saturday, mm. and this is a Wednesday, and the, a party, a, a party to an action comes out to say. Well, the court has decided I was in court. Of course, he was in court. Mm -hmm. I've been in the profession for 40 years. Of course, he's been in the profession for more than 40 years. Mm -hmm. And this is the position of the court. Well, you know, in politics, a lot of things are on the table. So um, it is not um, unexpected for a party to also throw sand into um, the other camp. I'm not saying that that's what Senator Etanan did, but I'm just talking about something that may have happened in in Bonyi State some years back. It's possible that you lose a case, you decide to throw sand into the other person's camp so that he doesn't also have um, a, any advantage because the people that hear that there is no candidate of the APC in Akwaibo based on the Supreme Court's judgment, they may not hear again that there is a candidate. Hello. So, yes. Yeah, I continue to call him back. Uh, thank you for that narrative. Uh, I think it has gone a long way to, you know, take some calls and bring understanding to the mind of people. Uh, I want to quickly say that uh, is it not uh, the same way that we've been talking over this program that uh, the party should invite uh, internal democracy? Because as Nigerians and Akwaibu might really understood what transpired between the Tainan and uh, Akana Udofia. Uh, we are not sent here. Uh, we are not calling names, but as the two acquired moments now, we know what happened. So, what being the final verdict now? It's always one of the problems in the whole case because everybody now will do one thing and get away with it when they go to the court because they will say you should prove beyond the level now. And this is the situation that is that is happening now. So, I want to advise the political parties that they should always carry the electorate along and invest on this issue of internal democracy, whereby if you lose during the primaries now, you will go home and support the winner instead of going to the court. This is what has happened over time, and it will continue. If a politician will not just, you know, learn to attain defeat. Thank you very much for having me. All right, thank you very much, Tedeo. Too. Yes, uh, hey, that's a good moral advice. Mm, Learning to is. accept defeat, be mm. magnanimous in defeat, mm. uh, embrace the other party, mm. celebrate with him, and work with him to achieve a better Nigeria. I think that doesn't exist in Nigeria. It exists outside Nigeria, oh. maybe in heaven, but mm. almost, almost definitely not in Nigeria. Now, wait. but but you know the problem, the major problem of um, Nigeria's um, uh, democracy is the fact that political parties refuse to obey their rules. If they obey their rules, most of these cases won't go to court. Well, you know, I was always blaming political parties until recently. INEC also decided not to obey their own regulations. So it's becoming a general thing in the country, and it's unfortunate. If rules are strictly kept, rules of the game, like in football, then there'll be no hello. issues. Yeah, hello, gentlemen. Yeah. Hello, learned gentlemen. Yes. <laughs> Happy running afternoon to all of you in, in the studio. Same to you, Levi. Yeah, exactly. It's Levi Bati from Osama here. Welcome, my question, Exactly. My question is, there's this insinuation being around that this for the Supreme Court judgment that uh, uh, has obviously settled uh, this matter and let it to rest and in the case between Econodotia and uh, Senator Itayana. INEC's refusal 
to upload or to update their website to include a candidate's name and picture the candidate of the APC uh, still stands and to a very large extent that can also invalidate him from uh, being a contestant or being a candidate that will contest at that particular election. I don't know how to what veracity that particular insinuation has right now. Uh, yes, I will get the last part of your sentence. I said I don't know what to, to what veracity, how authentic is that information that Interforce so only has refused to upload or update the All right. All right. name. This part of the Supreme Court judgment. That okay. Now that he had, he's not still the candidate of the party. Of, I mean, the APC as a as a party. All right. I get I get your point. Now, Levi, if you understand that. Uh, Elections are not fought by individuals, but are fought by political parties. Okay. Yes, and there is this high traffic on names coming in and out by virtue of court judgments everywhere in the in Nigeria. It's not just peculiar to Akwai Wim State. One of the things that I know I need does is to wait to have a copy of the certified true, a certified true copy of the judgment okay, of court, so they'll be acting court, right? in line with the law. But not necessarily in line with the... Final no. court right now, so you can settle the matter. It can't be a truth in your court, in your superior court, so why should automatically until I need to update your website to include his name? So it's, it's not a decision of I need to include or exclude the name of any candidate. It's the decision of the court. As long as the court has made that decision, that order will follow through. But in following through that order, you know how it is with the courts and its bureaucracy to draw up the order, have it signed, certified, and sent to INIC. It could take more than 24 hours, of course. As in this case, it's taking more than 24, 48 hours. But yet again, if you finally get yeah, to its destination and the yeah, name of the proper persons would, of course, be uploaded before the I election, I guess. Okay, okay. All right, thank you. Let, let, me, let, me, let me also add this to that. Um, if APC has sent a Canadofia's name to INEC, APC National Working Committee has sent a Canadofia's name to INEC, INEC has no option than to accept the name. That's true. Now, following the judgment of the Supreme Court, INEC even has more reason to accept the name and have it published immediately. But let's even assume that INEC does not publish the name. Maybe INEC is too busy or INEC does not want to publish the name. The fact that INEC has failed to publish the name of a candidate doesn't automatically disqualify that candidate from that election. The candidate has emerged from the primaries of his political party and therefore the candidate is qualified to stand for that election. So INEC has a responsibility to publish, but even if INEC does not publish but I don't even know I don't even I, I don't even understand why Anne would not publish when the owners of the party have said this is the person that we have as our candidate and it has no option Supreme Court has also affirmed that um, uh, nomination so what's I like doing I think should as fast as possible the, the same way they they quickly do some other things I think they should as fast as possible do this so, uh, so that the, the owner the the members of the political party will know will be rest assured clearly that they are you know they have their candidates for that election it's in it. i don't know why how it can be defined fast and uh, <laughs> how it came by the speed of i make okay. yeah. well, but if i make doesn't publish i think i don't say they will not publish no it's it's how it's few days to election if they don't publish the result it's going to affect the number of votes because as it stands now due to the misleading statements most people do not know that Akaradofia is still standing election. Yes. But I, I don't know. I agree that a lot of people don't read newspapers. Now, with respect to the publication of those names on the internet, it's only the very educated people that will go to find the names on the internet. So the ones that are not very educated are comfortable and conversant with a trend in politics, where they have people standing around to tell them, all right, you're a great party. This is now the new candidate. The Supreme Court yeah, well, has... Well, once it's on social media, whether the person is there or not... Yeah, before you round up, yeah, before you round up, I had, I think, on a, a, a radio program, some person called and was asking about that. Don't just go straight to the Supreme Court because mm -hmm. it appears faster. 
Mm. I, I guess he was talking with respect to the CBN policies. Yeah. That ordinarily he would have expected if there's a fast way of doing this thing, why don't you just do it? Mm. Yes. No, no. <laughs> uh, it's they, they, procedure. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but seriously, there's someone owing me, and I'm thinking of briefing my lawyer to take it straight to the Supreme Court. Uh, Are you very fast. Lender? It's why very, it's very why fast. would people it's be No, I, I, I rendered legal services months. and the person has not paid me for about two months now. Mm -hmm. And so if I brief my lawyer and tell him to take it straight to the Supreme Court, it will be the other ways than very fast. They are even going to court. Uh, no, I don't want to take that one. <laughs> <laughs> you get a loan shot to recover your money for you. I know. Mm. Uh, so, well, I, I think um, it, it, it's, uh, it's sad when judgments of courts can be bantered around people try to make a mockery of it you you bring yes good evening class caller thank you very much my name is andy okay i'm calling from Rio. andy from Rio. go on sir yeah i think it is issues like this that we the people who want to you know check or wreck the strength of our institutions I think what INEC is trying to do uh, could be compared to what the CBN is also trying to do. Because uh, these institutions, they seem to act slowly, they seem to respond slowly to issues that concern the court. And it's not healthy for, it's not healthy for this country, it's not healthy for the people. I think INEC should have done the, 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 the publishing of these men very, very rapidly. They should have taken it, they should have done it rapidly, fast enough, instead of throwing the people into confusion. Because ni now Nigerians are so educated on matters like this. You can imagine the people now are waiting for the government of the CBN to make statements before they start receiving this old note. People don't want to take the money. It's the same thing with INEC. People are now beginning to say, I can not his name is not going to appear, his name is not there, and they are now beginning to get confused about how to vote. You see, the, right. so the way all these institutions right. are doing it, not, it doesn't make sense. Yes, I think we are totally out of time. We really appreciate your call, and uh, we hope you call back next time. So, Ekibiri, hey, oh. uh, I, I think, well, it, we've had a hitch starting this program. It's quite an elaborate topic that we need to discuss on it. We are out of time and we really must go. Uh, thank you very much for always being available. It's in the past. Thank you very much. My name is Anthony Ebuk and I believe everything you do from now to next week when we meet again, we'll be later. Nigerian politics, which is the only one allowed by grossly our governors have to share police powers with the president as stipulated by the constitution. We do not have a federal government police force. We have the Nigeria police force, which shall be administered, organized, and supervised by the Nigerian police force. No, my lord, I want to say something. Uh -huh. I want to say something here. Perhaps it might also enlarge the scope of people who should be invited here for examination. My lord, if we cannot find those who literally murdered Abiola, who are those people who could be said to be the beneficiaries of the death of Abiola? Rogers has linked you with some of the killings he did. He never did. He linked you with the attempted murder of Ibru. He did not. My lord, the matters council is leading the evidence in our matters. Is this an adversary proceeding? It's not, my lord, but uh, we, you can't be talking about cases which are in court, Is my this lord. an adversary proceeding? It's not, my lord. These cases are in court, my lord. I'm going to remind you, your lordship. My lord, my lord, sorry, my lord. I think I'll be in court with my lord. Legally Speaking, a program that deals with legal issues and questions we face as citizens of this amazing country, Nigeria. Legally Speaking, join us every Friday from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. for Legally Speaking.